Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. I apologize in advance for my inability to raise my voice above a certain volume level. I usually, I operate on that ability to talk very quietly and then get way up here, but I, I can't. I don't know. It's one of two. We got the, uh, I don't like strawberry, but uh, one of two things happened. I was doing a bunch of coursework. And I made a lot of dust. Like a lot. There was either something in that dust that I inhaled. Or I caught something at Shacktoberfest. I feel fine. Except for the inability to swallow like a normal person. And every once in a while I cough up gray stuff. So you will, you will have to bear with me. This is, a, this is an installment here. This, this is an installment. This, for those unfamiliar, and I'm sure there will be many, I was not familiar when it arrived, is a Losi Comp Crawler. I am told circa 2007, 2008. And this is, I don't think, any way better exhibited by the fact that it is, yes, still exists out there, all standard hardware. So... Imperial, a combination of a 16th inch wrench and a 332nd wrench is what you need. I don't know if someone replaced the axles or the axles were just always metric because these are 4 millimeter and they threaded right on. I haven't had any sort of issue. And it came, uh, uh, one of the channel members sent this in, and I do apologize, because. but here's the problem. Uh, their screen name is one thing. Their YouTube handle is another thing. Their email is another thing. Uh, when I don't give credit where credit's due for these sorts of things, it's because, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. People will send me money in PayPal for shipping for a ploffering or something, and I'm like, I don't know who this person is because the name on the PayPal is not the same as the name of the person that I'm talking to, which is not the same as the YouTube account. That's why I've kind of tried to consolidate and make just everything be Crawler Canyon. So let, let's let's here get into the Losi Comp Crawler. It has some twin vertical plate, as you can see. It has some things that are very notable, both positively and negatively. The Comp Crawler is unique, in, in like I think it might be the only instance. Like, look, do do, do we see how small? Like, they're not even pumpkins. They just, they get a little thicker. Because these use what are called worm drive axles. So the worm drive axle is bizarre, okay? You have a spiral gear at the top, which basically rotates like, like, a, like, a, uh, like a ship auger, like a big drill bit. It looks like that, so it rotates like this. And that, in turn, turns the ring gear, or what would be the ring gear. What this does is provide a tremendous amount of gear reduction. When I had this thing apart and was fiddling with it initially, after I took it out of the box, and it didn't come with the wheels and tires. Those, those were already here. Uh, I supplied all the electronics, but the rig as it sits, the shocks, the axles, everything, it came like that. I assembled it, put it together, and was just trying to figure out how it works. The There's a a grand strength and a grand weakness of the worm drive axle, which is you can't you can't you can't make it roll. And you might say, oh well it's powered up. It does it doesn't matter. You can't you cannot do it because only the worm gear can turn the ring. The ring can't turn the worm gear. So my guesstimate is that this was a response to the fact that at the time Things like speed controls that could throw out a ton of drag brake, they weren't really a thing. Uh, made notable by the fact that the dig servo, which is right up here, we can we can see it we can see it work if I can find the button. This is a what I had always called a mini servo. It's just a it's just a little bit smaller than a standard size servo, but much larger than a micro. And I managed to locate a photograph online of the proprietary Losi 
servo that went in place there, I had to fabricate that because there's no room. There's no room. It's infuriating how wedged in there they got that. And really, low C slash later axial. This is the kind of thing that they love to do. The way this linkage works, the dig unit is in the middle and it's held by two springs and the springs push two identical three dog cups together that have the output cups. So when you engage dig like this, see now we're in dig, but we're not in dig. It doesn't stop the shaft from rotating. If I put it in dig and go like this, so I'm holding dig, I can just take the rear drive shaft and spin it. And you can see the wheels very slowly turning. I wish there was a way to spin that faster. There you go. So nothing stops the drive shafts. It's that worm drive can only be propelled by the gearbox. So all of the gear reduction is in the axles. Best as I can tell, there is no gear reduction in the gearbox. The gearbox is only there. It goes from gear to an intermediate gear to what would be the spur, and the spur is tiny. It might have 20 teeth. Goes inside the box to another gear, which drives an output gear that has the two outputs on it. So there is, as best as I can tell, I was doing it this way, rotating this gear and watching the output shafts. We might have like 1.2 to 1, but it looks like 1 to 1. So all of the gear reduction is in the worm drives at the axles. It is fitted with a 35 turn. This is a team brood something aider, devastator, annihilator, inebriator, collaborator, something aider in there. It's been sitting in a box for a while. This is the fourth elect. Y'all heard that, right? Could be ghosts. This is the fourth, well, 3.5th electronic setup that's been in here. I started off by putting in a Fusion, Fusion 1200, which is why these links are mounted to the outside and I haven't moved them back yet. Because if you move these to the outside, you can fit a Fusion in there. Put the Fusion in there, took this thing out, drove it. After reading a couple reports on the internet uh, dating back 10 plus years of people saying the axles are super loud and they get super hot and like that noise is that noise is the worm drives it is determinedly coming from here i guess that here's how you can see we're gonna we're gonna come in on this in a second so i had the 1200 in there speed seemed okay the motor, I've never seen a Fusion get hot before, but it got hot. So then I took some other electronics that have been salvaged from another rig that was sent in, threw them in here, uh, Castle Creations, Mamba Mini, X2 Mini, the tiny little, tiny little Mambas, tiny little guy like that, and a Holmes Revolver 2500. And it felt pretty good, but man, I do not... I really do not care for Castle ESC's Powering Outrunners. It was, there was a big deadie band. And after about three minutes of wheeling it, once again, the speed control was so hot. The speed control was too hot to touch. So I was like, I'm going to set this thing on a bench. Actually, up on a yoga block. I pulled out a yoga block and I set this thing over there. And I was like, we'll come back to that when I can figure out what's going on. And then, literally, it actually, it, it happened in the shower. And I was like, drag brake. So, as you can see, see the wheels coast down? This has drag brake turned completely off. Because when unloaded, they will roll. But if there's any load on the worm drive's at all, it's drag brake. 
It's not an electronic anchor. It's a mechanical anchor. It can't rotate unless the motor rotates it. So I thought, oh, my God. It's drag brake. What if I just turn off drag brake? This thing was designed basically before drag brake was a thing, I guess. I don't know. I've said it on the channel before. I bought my first rock crawler in 2020. So this was way before my time. Turned the drag brake off, and sure enough, I took them out, messed about with them a little bit, and it was fine. Uh, speed control warms up a little bit. It's just a bog standard 1080 non G2. Uh, there's no body, and I don't know what I'm going to do about for the body. I have to run the servo at 6 volts because this guy is a high-tech 235 AG, which is why it's so fast. Like if you can see the linkage here. This was an old pan car servo. It's been through a fire, which is why the, the wiring looks like that. And somehow uh, setting this thing up to get the receiver in it uh, you, you notice the light is red. I somehow turned the gyro on. So like the second time I took this out on the rock to make sure that I had put the parts together correctly. If you ever accidentally turn the gyro on in your, uh, in your speed control, it gets really weird. Really, really weird on rocks. Because you're very rarely like this. You're like this. Speaking of like that, the twin vertical plate, big spacing right? We don't have that. We've got good triangulation. See, we go wide to narrow and wide to narrow. We have them touching at the lower and spaced out really far at the upper. So what that makes a, a vehicle do is have a tendency to twist. It wants to twist. And I think you can tell that. It doesn't just want to twist. It like th This is how they used to do things, I guess. A little bit more in the rear than in the front. Am I hitting? No, I'm not hitting anything. That's just that's that's just how it is. So the flex is absurd, and there's really nothing to it. Uh, as you see it right now, the 2200 is way too big. Uh, if we can figure out some sort of covering for this, and this becomes a a member of the the Canyon fleet and earns its name, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we're we're going to deal with the electronics. Uh, I, I just grabbed the triple four out of the bin. I would replace the triple four with something else, probably just like an Amazon blue case, you know, nothing, nothing fancy. Uh, because any body you try to put on this is, is going to, is going to limit the flex unless it's just a tiny little thing that goes in the middle. I, I have no, I have no ideas. Anyone with experience, shout something out. So also, I worry about the, the longevity of that 235 HD and uh, AG and finding a mini servo nowadays. I think high tech still makes the 225, but that size servo, you can see it from the back better. That's That's how big that servo is. That servo size basically doesn't exist. And the way this gearbox was designed, like I said, I had to make that horn. I found a picture of what the, the stock horn looked like. And I kind of, I tried to approximate it as best as I could. These are uh, Proline Ibex in Predator. And they have the foams salvaged from the Injora Bully Comps. So they are, one might say, potentially too soft potentially but right on it's like 4.51 pounds as as outfitted right there so there's there's really no weight this is something that could quite easily be made into a lightweight uh, half height servo in the front go down to like a 650 or 850 battery would that would save that alone would save six ounces. We'd we'd be very close to four pounds. Uh, full blown five forty is a little heavy. Could go to an outrunner, but it's kind of like this is one of those things where 
I feel like an outrunner is almost wasted because outrunners are tremendous for drag break and this thing doesn't need any. It needs it needs no drag break because it has mechanical drag break. Like we're just not even touching. So I have not put this thing through its paces at all. What I do, and I would love to I would love to get this guy down to about here. I haven't gone through any springing yet. So these, the, this is how it came. Cleaned it, took the gearbox uh, apart to see what it looked like inside. Found electronics, spent most of my time trying to figure out how to get a linkage to work because we don't have a ton of steering angle. It's not bad, but it's also not great. This thing really relies on dig to, to give you any kind of turning circle. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm very curious. We're, we're so we're, we'll just run it through. Where's my clipboard? We'll just run it through a quick view. We'll, we'll run it through a, a, a quick view. This is, this is not official. Like, uh, I, I, I don't really see the point of an official, uh, quick view in this application because these don't exist. I tried to look up, would it be possible for me to get a body or even a body from a low C night crawler? Uh, no, that stuff's that stuff is all gone, all gone, gone. Uh, I don't know if these are the tires. They really looked the part. Like this looked the part to me. Uh, these originally came on 2.2s. I figured I'd put some 2.2s on there. These are skinny 2.2 Predators, very soft. We, we will we will see um so we're gonna do an an impromptu the points are made up and the scores don't matter quick view of the uh of the low c uh comp crawler as it sits and maybe by running through that we can figure out what does it need that it doesn't have and by the same token what does it have that it doesn't need so let's find out four and a half pounds predators Predator Ibex, like, I don't know, uh, I, have, I have no idea what to expect, like, I drove it up Daphne's line a couple times just to, with, with the temp gun in my pocket, just to see if everything was overheating, and for the first uh, three times of the 3.5, boy, howdy was it, uh, this counts as a .5 because I was driving it and I was like, turn off the drag brake! So I went and turned all the drag brake off, turned it down to zero, and now it doesn't get hot. Or at least it didn't. I'm still going to put the, 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 the temp gun in my pocket for this run. Yeah, there we go. Temp gun going in my pocket. Low C comp crawler. An, a a, a non-canon, an unofficial quick view. Uh, oh, i got to cross that tire. Um, comp crawler. All right. I'll see you outside. Just a couple of drive back notes. I must say, 35 turn. Did I even mention that it was a 35 turn? It's a 35 turn. 35 turn on 3S seems just about perfect. Uh, wide open, three ish, maybe three and a half miles an hour, just about perfect. I don't think this thing is going to need to go any faster than that. We got a mini pin, which is going to respond to really low speed. So, if the low speed control is there, I don't know what the throttle response is going to feel like with no reduction in the gearbox and all the gear reduction in the axles. It's, it's odd. Because even Traxxas kind of splits it down the middle in a TRX4. There's no reduction in the gearbox, all the reduction in the axles. All I can keep thinking is if you paired this with a three gear, you'd have like 100 to 1 gear reduction. All the mechanical advantage in the world. Yeah, as one would expect, it wants to go very slowly. Getting a little glide there. I think it's because I... Okay, let's get a little more of a straight line. It's about 65 degrees outside. And again, it's so light that the 
the, the, the foams are, are not acting firm. Yeah, it will not, it will not pull the rear end up over the beam there. Or will it? There it is. Are we just de-dusting? I don't know. I have no, this is the crazy part to me. There's no drag brake. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm giving it too little input. It, it is responding a little more, a little, a little burpy. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be possible to, to lift a tire with this thing. Oh, my gracious. The dig. I guess because of the nature of the dig unit. So it is held out of dig. There's a, like I said, the, there's this, the gear in the middle and a spring on either side of it. So it's, it's held into four wheel drive and you have to push past that spring. So even if you, so it will automatically recenter out of dig all the time. So the dig responsiveness is so fast. It feels almost instantaneous. That's pretty crazy. But as I said, the, the turning circle is not, is not awesome. Uh, and you, you have to use dig to turn this thing around. All right. strange it doesn't it doesn't behave that it's this light it doesn't it doesn't drive like four and a half pounds it's really difficult to it also doesn't drive like it has a front and a back uh what a shame that this thing is so long ago discontinued because this is a platform that i could honestly see with that worm drive I could honestly see four wheel steer being really something on this vehicle. More so than the dig. This one, like if I want to make the turn here, I have to dig. And the dig works amazingly. But it really makes me wonder what, what could it be like four wheel steer? And I know it's not on the quick view order for tires. This is an unofficial review of these tires. Uh, I, I don't, I don't believe in testing a tire on a, on an unknown quantity. Oi! Well, yeah, right here. Oh, you can get in trouble with this thing. Okay, we. Where'd my tire go? That was a full-on two-handed extraction there. Uh, and this would be the rig. People have said, and I have said, that uh, they don't get dig. And at the beginning, I didn't get dig either. Didn't know when to use it. Didn't really know how to use it. This thing would be the dig trainer because without dig you don't get to turn around when we get over to Daphne's and we get and we get out into the open we, we will show you the turning circle of this thing oh look here's the thing that no one can do It's that thing. It's power creep. It's 15-year-old power creep. It's 
get a look at the turning circle here. It's okay, we're right about there. Side of frame. The lock. Like, it's not the worst you've ever seen. We'll do we'll do a couple revolutions to uh to, to get some tire mark down there, but still. That's got to be in about a between six and seven foot circle, outside to outside. I mean, of course. We can tighten that up a little bit. Ooh, we made a Death Star. We made a Death Star. And so from Daphne's, we learned many things. Oh my. Yeah, the so ordinarily, when when you apply dig, you're able to shoot the other end of the ground. Because when you're in dig, the rear axle and everything is locked, and only the front axle gets power, meaning that when you're off power, it can kind of free spin. But we have no free spinning here. We're mechanically locked. So dig doesn't Dig doesn't behave exactly how it does on any other thing that I've used Dig on. Oh my. Woof! So, it can't be that it has the best Dig that I've ever seen. I think it's that Dig paired with the worm drive axles really brings about another feel. Like, it can do stuff. I would never have thought to try to pull up over that rock as far... Yeah, see, right? When you dig the front end, they operate independently. And the way the linkage works, like I said, there's a spring on either side of the gear. If there was enough room, you could dig the front. So you could stop the front and power the rear. But there's no room for the linkage to move. Like, not where the servo is mounted. So it could have front dig and rear dig, but they designed it in such a way as that you can't fit a linkage in there to make it happen. I don't know if these are the perfect tires. These are the only tires I've seen on this. And they're pretty good. And as I said, they, at the very least seem cosmetically appropriate. Yeah, I would have thought these foams would be too soft for anything. I'm trying to figure out where to aim it in. Because this is going to load that rear up enough to do that. You can hear by the whine that you know everything's fine. It sounds very weird. Uh, I just have to assume that's the worm drive. It, it constantly sounds oh, oh, like I'm running out of juice all the time. Yeah, I, you know, I couldn't give numeric scores to this. Not to the tire, not to the rig. I don't know if it's the perfect tire. I, I They work. I don't think this combo of tire and foam would, would work at all on anything else. Let's get some uh, coming at you. The, the dig performance, once you kind of, once I kind of tie my head around it a little bit, how much it's not like other digs. It's the snappiest, most responsive dig ever. As I said, it's about 65 degrees out. The motor and the ESC are both about 90 degrees. Yeah, see, moments like this, like, like I almost feel like there's not enough torque.
This should be able to make this, I think. But what I learned over there a moment ago from Daphne's, the perfect line, the line that I'm used to, this guy can go places that others previously could not. So I really do have to reconsider lines like that. The ground clearance is is drug-like. I thought I thought that was gonna make it. It, it feels, again, I go back to trigger feel and throttle feel. It feels bizarre. It feels heavy, uh, like beyond planted. If planted is good heavy, this feels more than that. Like it almost feels stuck. And when you apply throttle, there's no it rolls in gradually, it grows in slowly. I definitely understand why they don't make things like this anymore. Because we've replaced what this thing can do mechanically with what virtually every speed control on the market can do electronically. Like I am, no I am noticing the drop in torque. Why is there a drop in torque, you ask? I had to use like 50% throttle through there because even with drag brake disabled, now that we've been wheeling for 15 minutes, motor's pretty hot. It's not. You, like, you have to be able to hear that stutter at low speed. Like right here, nothing. I'm at 40. Like the first 40% of throttle, I don't get anything. It's just there's so much mechanical load on the motor. It is a... And then right here, I need to slow creep it. And I can't. Yeah, like what? What did guys do 15 years ago? Like, how, how did they accommodate for this? Speed control and motor are both in the one teens. Uh, and genuinely, if you let it sit for a little bit, and it cools down, you can feel that torque come back. Like, see, so yeah, I let it sit for a minute. Like the, the drag brake is, well, I've never experienced mechanical drag brake. The mechanical drag brake is truly something else. I, I get why they had to stop doing it. Oh, a little shuttly. Hopefully, you can get a couple hits on here. Oh, oh. With those link mounts mounted so close together, Jake the Capra, uh, not Jake the Capra, Jake the Snake, comma the Capra, also do that with the link mounts touching like that, which gives you that additional flex but does also give you the tendency to snap out, which is what we just saw there. And I, I don't mind letting it sit upside down for a while because that just means the electronics have a chance to cool down. I don't, I, I think that one of the, I think one of the uh, plugs fell out. He'll, uh, the old 235 servo, not hot, 
but it, it went to sleep a little bit. Powered it, powered it off and back on again and it's working again, so I don't know. Let's see, I, I wanna see. Can we get around this way? Yeah, that tendency to throw that, throw that wheel high. Oh, I can't even get the, the lack of pumpkin over that. It's a, that, I, I mentioned earlier for a minute, I mentioned power creep. And we're here, there, uh, in that you're just like, well, let's try this dumb thing and let's try that dumb thing. And this thing will get out of shape. Very race car-esque in that there are no, there are no assistants. Not electronic, not mechanical, nothing. You, you, are, you are driving and any mistakes you make, you will get to pay for. The suspension is not going to try to help you out. Uh, these pillows uh, for inserts are not going to try to help me out. But I will, I will say, yeah, you also, you, you heard that in the, uh, you basically, so I'm digging in a circle. I have to stop, release it. It's like double, it, it, it's like we got an, uh, we have a non uh, hydraulically assisted clutch. You have to release throttle and then unlock dig at the same time. It would almost be like I need to set the dig on this. Dig can't be momentary on this rig. Dig needs to be set on a switch because if you come out of dig while under power, <laughs> that said, I don't know if it's the old timey high tech 235 or the axles or the actual dig mechanism or some magical combination of the three. But it is the best feeling dig I have ever encountered by a margin. So as this was not a freshly charged battery and I have no idea how much time we've got, particularly as we're heating up all the electronics. Well, okay. For those not in the know, that little ascent there, that, that's, that's not an easy one. We are, we're 80 de degrees right there, which is, uh, what is that in terms of slope? 175%? It really, we've got a, we've got a, a twofold thing. The electronics choice is apparently nearly critical, but at the same time, it's not critical at all. So long as you have low speed control, it doesn't matter. The, the motor doesn't need torque to break. So as long as you have enough torque to get the thing moving, you're good because it's just going to hold mechanically. It is going to have a dr an unassailable drag brake. So if you have a speed control that like, like the SA480X, if it had low speed control, it, it is renowned for a complete lack of drag brake. But you don't need the drag brake because the worm drives are the thing. Thank God for big old tires. My trained temperature finger, I left the temp gun way over there. My trained temperature finger has the motor in the uh, upper 120s, low 130s. I need, I, like, I need to like put a two liter bottle or something on it. Yeah, that motor hot. And uh, it's, it's right about the smallest pinion I can fit. Speed control hot too. Not danger zone hot, but in crawler terms, certainly hotter than what we're used to working with. Yeah, I feel like four wheel steer right here would be the jam. 
Let's try the hard stuff. This is the approach nobody likes. Could indeed, I think, potentially, get away with a little bit firmer of a rear insert. I'm pretty happy with the performance of the tire overall. Yeah, the dig not setting the front end down is something really to get used to. It is a, it is a strange thing. Everything about it feels very purpose built. Yeah, and the forward drive, as, as one would anticipate. It's, it's definitely up there. The dig, though. Well, the dig, though. It has gotten to the point now where uh, you can smell warm electronics when you get close to it. Genuinely, though, dig. The capability level of this is, this is, this is that thing. Uh, I'm going to take you back to Top Gear, the, the three blokes, and they, I, I distinctly recall an episode where they took a Ferrari, something from the 1960s, a late 1960s Ferrari, and they put it up against basically like, like, a, like a 2013 Honda Accord. And the Honda Accord was just as fast around the track. Actually, I think it might have been a little faster than the Ferrari. And I think that's what we have here. The capabilities of this thing are really quite immense, but like the the tax, the tax, the, the load that it puts on the electronics and the suspension is something that really needs to be like accommodated. Like you have to drive this in a particular way. And I'm talking here while it's sitting because there's a nice breeze here from the west and I'm hoping it's cooling it down just a little. Like, this is a crawler that needs a fan on the motor, which is crazy because what crawler needs a fan on the motor? It is, uh, and uh, also constantly in the back of my mind, all the gears inside the gearbox, save for the pinion and the spur up at the top, that, what, what, what would be a spur? The thing that where a slipper would be, we'll call that the spur, uh, is all plastic. They're all plastic. And I did not take the axles apart. They felt particularly smooth and well greased. Part of me is assuming there's plastic in there as well. So the 35 turn brushed is probably the best option for this guy because this is a special occasion boy, right? Like it's super crazy, super capable. But uh, if you break something, uh, you, might, you might be out of luck. It will just go. It's, it is ridiculous. But, as I said before, I understand why they don't make them anymore. And, uh, this is, this is a, a, a product of a bygone era, I guess, in terms of crawling, for sure. It's all just a little too odd. Like the ring and pinion just works, man. We don't have any many different flavors of it. This thing is neat. It is super neat. And all I can imagine is that 15 years ago, when guys were having to like, like what were your off the shelf crawler options at that time? This is around the time, correct me if I'm wrong, where guys were, you know, buying old Tamiyas and stuff to get the straight axles and building rock crawlers basically from scratch. So when this thing shows up, like, it has to be where people are like, 
Like when people saw the first airplane fly by and they were like, what? This had to be very similar to that. We are used to uh, everything being eminently capable now. And I have to keep reminding myself this whole time driving this that this thing is that is that capable. And it's 15 years old, which is wild. Sure, it doesn't have a body on it. We could get it under four pounds, I think, without too much effort. That'd be interesting. So I will, I will, I'll, uh, I will, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll shoot it toward the people in the comments. Uh, what, what, what do we want to see out of the as of yet unnamed Losi Comp Crawler? Like, what, what, what should, what, what do we do with it? I, I, I don't. Where does it fit in? So. Get down there in the comments below. Uh, tell me any experiences you've had. If you're, if you're one of those few that's been in there that long, uh, not not quite three years yet for me. So it's a it's real it's real different. Uh, any any other thing you might want to mention down in the comments? Throw that down there as well. I thank you so much for watching. Like if you liked and subscribe if you haven't. The usual the usual yada yada that we do here at the end. My my throat. I've mostly just been silent today, and it's not even it's not even the good sore throat where like I can't get particularly low in the timber. Like I can get down I can get down reasonably low, but ordinarily this sort of infection or lungs full of dust or whatever I might have would I could get a real much more of a, a rich dulcet tone out of it. So we're gonna have to settle with what I have. Like, I'm not even on cold medication. I've just been eating strawberry cough drops, and I don't care for strawberry cough drops particularly. I'm a cherry man. So I will see you in the next one, and hopefully my voice will feel better, if not sound better. And thank you for joining us here in the canyon, and I've realized that I can't drive out of frame because I've perched it atop a mountain. So I will see you one and all next time, and I hope that in between now... And when we inevitably meet again, you would and I'll do your very best to have a good one, everybody. We will welcome you back to the canyon and say then, or say now, about then, I'll see you when I see you.